Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video we're going to be doing yet another tech experiment here on the Dell Latitude D610. And this is going to be a, the start of another mini series here on the channel of uh, probably a couple longer videos. Uh, these videos are definitely going to be, I would say, at least 45 minutes to an hour long. Um, and this is going to be very similar to the uh, Longhorn Upgrade Saga project that we did on this very same laptop uh, a few weeks ago on this channel. And if you haven't seen that, basically what we did is I started at a very early build of Windows Longhorn and we tried to upgrade our way through some of those builds and see how far we can get. Get. So today we're kind of taking that same concept and applying it to the Windows Whistler builds. We're going to be trying to start at a very early version of Windows Whistler and upgrade our way to uh, hopefully the RTM release of Windows XP. That's the goal. And some of you guys suggested this on the original video, so I appreciate that as well. Uh, so today we're going to be taking a look at five Whistler builds. It was initially going to be six. Uh, we were going to start with 2202, but uh, trying to get the setup to run off camera was causing the system to blue screen. So we're actually going to be starting with 2211. And we're going to be going through uh, some of the same builds that I took a look at in my Windows XP development history video, which if you haven't seen that, go ahead and check it out up in the cards. That was a pretty cool video. And, uh, you know, it was a fun one to make. It just kind of takes a look back at the development process process of Windows XP. Uh, to kind of give you the gist uh, and kind of the outline of today's video, we're going to be starting with 2211. We're going to be then trying to upgrade to 2250, then to 2267, then to 2296, and finally 2419. Uh, we're going to be ending off on 2419 in this video. Now, the reason that I'm doing this, I'm kind of structuring it this way, uh, really just to have a nice uh, ending point for this video and that ending point is going to be when the Luna theme was introduced because 2419 was the very last build of Windows Whistler that included the watercolor theme as opposed to the Luna theme. So right now we are booted into uh, 2211's setup and this build, like most of the other ones we're going to take a look at today, actually all except for 2419, do not require a product key. Another thing this build does not have is the uh, quick format option. There is no option to perform a quick format. You have to perform a full uh, format on your hard drive, which is why this is taking uh, a decent amount of time. This is definitely much slower than a quick format, and that's because it isn't a quick format. So I'm going to uh, allow the drive to format here. We had actually just installed, uh, this machine is currently running a incomplete copy of Microsoft Neptune. You guys may know what happened there from the uh, Neptune kind of the very interesting trying to upgrade in quotes from XP to Neptune, which I know uh, sounds impossible. And spoiler alert, uh, it kind of was. It didn't really work out in that video. But if you kind of want to learn more about that whole project, go and check out this video up in the cards. But like I said, I'm going to let this drive format. And by the time I come back, we should be uh, on our way with 2211 setup. All right, everyone. Well, we're finally here. It took about two hours for that format to complete. And then the system, you know, the operating system copied its files to the Windows installation folders and it restarted. And here we are at the uh, very Windows 2000 like setup. You can see this looks uh, identical to the regular Windows 2000 setup because this is a very early build of Windows Whistler. So we're going to go with the default options here. And any moment now, we should get the, uh, the wonderful Windows 2000 boot screen. So we're starting Windows and there we go. So yeah, this early build, uh, now like I said, I, I attempted to try um, build 2202, which was, uh, I believe, well that was the very first like leaked build, I mean the earliest leaked build of Whistler that we have, and uh, so I was going to try to start with that. Unfortunately, like I mentioned at the, at the beginning, that uh, build decided to blue screen as it was setting up, but that one was kind of interesting because from what I understand, it doesn't even recognize itself or it doesn't even identify itself as a Whistler build. It says Windows 2000, so that was a really, really early build. Uh, we do get this network identification wizard, which basically has you set a username and password. We're just not going to bother setting a password. And well, basically what it does is it has you choose between do you want to have people enter in a username and password or do you want to have Windows like always assume that this user is going to log in. So we're just going to go with that since it's only the user or since it's the only user I'm going to create on the system right now. Uh, oh, actually, since I went back, check that out. So since I went back and then decided to go forward again, 
uh, it now is trying to recreate this user account. So we'll just hit cancel. So it was trying to create like an another user account there. And yeah, this is the build where you can probably see down here at the bottom, it identifies itself as not Windows Whistler, but Whistler Windows 2001 Professional. We got the same Windows 2000 getting started uh, menu here, or the getting started program, we'll go ahead and exit out of that. So we're gonna get started right off the bat, and uh, I think maybe we'll, we'll start with kind of rearranging the desktop icons at first, so we'll kind of just drag these around, no particular order. Uh, let's make a rich text document. And we'll just call this log maybe. And we'll open this up and we will uh, write in here, let's just say, uh, hello from Whistler2211. So we'll just do that, save that, and go ahead and close out of that. I think that's a good desktop wallpaper. Obviously, since we're running this at uh, 16 colors, we don't have the proper drivers installed. So obviously, it's not going to display uh, properly, like, you know, 100%, but we'll just leave it like that. We're going to leave the resolution at 640 by 480 just so you guys can still see everything. And let's change some icons here. So let's maybe make my computer the X icon. Uh, we'll click OK. Let's make my documents the... Uh, let's just do this one here. We're going to make my network places a tree because that's super cool. Recycle bin full. Let's make it a, oh gosh, what do I want to do here? Let's do this one for recycle bin full and recycle bin empty. Uh, let's go with this one. And yes, of course, we're going to make some changes to the uh, style of the window titles and all that good stuff. So we're going to, let's actually just change the color scheme. So I think that's good guys. I think that is a, a decent little set of modifications that we've done here to uh, build 2211. So we're gonna move right along to our next build, which is gonna be 2250. Uh, this build is a technical beta build. It's not a pre-beta build. And it was compiled uh, on June 28th of 2000. And we launched right into the uh, Whistler setup. So we're gonna upgrade to, again, it says Windows 2000. This is one of those builds where you're, you're gonna see mentions of both Codename Whistler and Windows 2000. So you see here we've got Codename Whistler, Codename Whistler, 2000, 2000. Uh, kind of all the text uh, says Windows 2000. And this is something that I mentioned in the retrospective as well. So we'll go next, we will accept the wonderful license agreement. And there we go, setup is copying files. Wow, that was, I shouldn't say anything because I feel like I'm gonna jinx myself because I'll always say something like, wow, that was so easy and it worked great. And then like the like literally the next clip will be, oh, there's this you know wonderful problem that we gotta deal with now. So it's like, well guys, we might have just run into a serious problem. I wasn't able to uh, catch it on camera. I was like walking by the computer as I was doing some other stuff and I noticed that it blue screened. It was going through the setup and then it just blue screened and uh, it restarted. So hopefully it'll be able to resume everything. At this point, I'm pretty sure it's overridden all of it because it already has copied files over to the Windows installation folders. I think this build, I think 2250 still had the 2000 boot screen. Yeah, setup is being restarted, okay. So I wonder if this has to do with the BIOS date because the BIOS date is set to uh, a, a date before this build even existed. So it might be having trouble there. With the Longhorn builds, we didn't really have that problem. That could be the problem. If it blue screens again, we'll just try that. We'll try to boot it into the BIOS and, you know, change the date. Wow, okay. I can barely see it. It says, it says beginning dump of physical memory. I couldn't see what the error was. I'm gonna change this to June uh, 28th of 2000. I don't know. I mean, this is one of those things. I mean, but see, look what I was telling. I mean, I just said like, oh yeah, guys, this looked like it was going great and okay, it's gonna restart perfect. And then we run into a problem. It's like, I'm telling you. It's like right when I say like, oh yeah, this is great. It's okay, working awesome. We're gonna move on with the next step. It seems like we're going smooth, okay. And then like literally the next clip, there's some like massive problem that just is gonna impede the entire setup from, from continuing on. So it said setup is being restarted. I would like to see what, I'm gonna get my phone here. I'm gonna try to take a photo of this screen if it comes up again, because it went by so fast, I could barely even see what it said. All I could make out was beginning dump of physical memory. Okay, so I, I took a photo of it. K mode exception not handled. Yeah, so that's the error right there. That's the error message. So uh, it again, it says K mode exception not handled address BFA 944 DB. It says date stamp. I assume that's just the date stamp of when the blue screen occurred. 
and it's processor.sys, and then it begins dump a physical memory and it restarts. So K mode exception not handled. Okay, so here's a article from PC Gamer. In a nutshell, it's when applications overwrite each other's memory, causing errors or crashing software, and in the case of a blue screen, a full system crash. So in Windows 10, they just recommend disabling fast startup, but obviously this is not Windows 10 that we're running here. So I wonder if maybe we start the upgrade process again. I really don't want to have to do another clean install and like wait two hours for the drive to format again, but I'm going to try to boot from the CD and I'm going to see if maybe we can go through the upgrade again and basically restart the whole thing because right now we have an incomplete Windows installation because there's nothing, I mean, it's already overridden the uh, existing Windows files, you know, it, I mean, we don't have a full copy of, uh, I was just going to say Vista, I don't have a full copy of Windows to boot into, so 2211 is not bootable anymore, yeah, so some common causes of this error, uh, according to neosmart.net, uh, faulty RAM module, which we know this doesn't have, it says that's the most common cause, cause two is corrupt or outdated device drivers, Sometimes the device drivers may become misconfigured, corrupt, or outdated. Um, so, I mean, we don't really have very many driver. I mean, we've got like the generic drivers installed for everything, like just all the default stuff. I didn't ins install any additional drivers. What I'm gonna try to do, this is again, just kind of thinking of ideas here. We are going to, first of all, we're gonna see if we can maybe restart the upgrade. It's just gonna probably see an, an incomplete Windows installation on the hard drive. So it's probably not even gonna find anything that can be upgraded. So, if this doesn't work, and if this only tells us to like do a clean install, which we'll see here, so we'll set up Windows 2000 now. Uh, oh, this is oh this is the build where when you press enter, because I, I do mention this in the retrospective as well. When you press enter to have set up automatically configure most aspects of your installation, it will blue screen. So we're gonna press C, and but that's not the same blue screen that we got or that we're getting right now. So we're gonna accept the agreement. Okay, it shows existing. No, it didn't find any existing Windows installation. So, because this is just coming up with the partitions and it's gonna have us install, like if we press enter, yep, installing to Windows 2000 will cause the, the other operating system to function improperly. I and mean, we, we can leave the current file system intact, but it's still, maybe we can try that. Let's just leave the current file system intact. I mean, this is probably gonna recopy all the files, but since we left the file system intact, I don't think it's going, I mean, it's not gonna perform a, a format, obviously, since it's not doing that. So it should just override the existing files. And yeah, so we're basically restarting the setup wizard. So we'll click on next. And this is where it detects, cause see before we didn't get that, we got that at the very beginning when we were still booted into build uh, 2211. That's when we got, where you had to actually click next. When we restarted, it just like auto, like once it copied files and everything, then it came up with this screen automatically. So right here is 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 where it blue screen. Yep, it blue screened again. All right. So twenty. I mean, twenty two fifty worked in a VM. It worked totally fine. Unfortunately, guys, I think we're gonna have to skip twenty two fifty and move on to twenty two sixty seven. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop out the DVD or the CD right here, and we're just gonna move on. We're gonna move on to uh, twenty two sixty seven. This is this is actually another technical beta build. So we'll pop it in here. This was this one was compiled on September 10th, uh, 2000. There's also no product key needed for this build. And yes, I am gonna boot in, into the BIOS just to change the date. And we're gonna essentially do the same thing. We're not gonna format, we're just gonna leave the partition table intact, but we're going to just have it copy files and which will essentially be doing a clean install. It, it just obviously won't format the drive. So uh, we're going to just let it load up here. So yeah, that, that kind of sucks. We weren't able, I mean, we were able to start the upgrade from 2202 to 22, or from 2211 to 2250, but we weren't able to complete it. So we weren't able to get 2250 installed even without upgrading. So that build has been crossed off the list. So we successfully installed one build. We now have three more, including this one. So that's 2267, 2296, and uh, 2419. Leave the current, oh, we do have the quick format option, so we can try that if this fails, but we're just going to leave it uh, and just have it not format, but just, uh, oh, it actually says, okay, caution, a Windows folder already exists that may contain a Windows installation. If you continue, the existing Windows installation will be overridden. This was the exact same message that we got uh, when we tried to do the XP to Neptune upgrade on this computer. 
uh, we got this exact same message where it says right here that not only will the Windows folder be deleted, but it will also delete all files, subfolders, all files, subfolders, user accounts, application security and desktop settings for that Windows version installation will be deleted as well. And the My Documents folder will be deleted. So we're basically starting with a clean slate. So we're gonna press L to delete and it's going to check drive C, it's gonna erase all those files and copy the new ones. So yeah, so far not looking really good for the upgrade saga. So yeah, there you go, deleting all our hard work is, <laughs> all our hard work is gone. Uh, but yeah, hopefully we'll be able to upgrade from this build, like I said. But you know what that means? We're gonna have to remake all those modifications. And yeah, check that out. Uh, Microsoft Windows Whistler Professional on the boot menu there as opposed to Windows 2000. This build does change the boot screen, as you can see, to the wonderful... I mean, this isn't my favorite one. My favorite one was in uh, 2419. Uh, well, actually, 2419 and... Uh, 2419 and the build after that had a very similar boot screen, just the logo actually changed. I think 2419 had uh, the older Windows flag, the whatever one was after that, which I took a look at in the original video, or in the retrospective, uh, has the newer Windows flag. All right, so we're at that familiar setup wizard. We're gonna press next. And this is the moment of truth. We'll see if it fails on the installing devices phase. The thing I noticed on the last build is it kind of flickered a little bit like the progress bar did. Oh no. Oh man, the same error too. Honestly, I think what we're gonna do, this is probably gonna sound kind of crazy, but we're gonna move back to this build here, which, oh my gosh, let me not drop the CD cases on the floor. These two builds are out the window. We are gonna have to, I mean, I'm going to try to find a build prior, like kind of in between 2267 and 2296. Uh, so we have a little bit more attempts at kind of trying to get something because 2296 is a beta one build and build uh, 2419 is, well, I see some sites will say it's a beta one, some say it's a pre-beta two. So we're still in a technical beta with 2250 and 67. They're both uh, technical betas, at least according to the collection book. I'm gonna go and do a little bit of research, try to find uh, another build to install, and yeah, I'll be back with you guys shortly. All right, welcome back everybody. So we have uh, a couple of options that we can pursue from this point forward. So in the last clip, what was happening is trying to get build 2250 and 2267 to install. Uh, both gave us that blue screen as you guys probably saw. So I went ahead and downloaded a build in between uh, 2267 and 2296, and that build is 2287. Now, this build unfortunately cannot be booted off of the CD. From what I, I understand, it results in yet another blue screen. So we have to boot off of a Windows 98 floppy disk, a Windows 98 boot disk. So that is what we are doing right now. So we have to essentially uh, do the same thing we did in the NT Upgrade Saga video for some of those early versions where we had to actually, I think it was for NT uh, 3.5 or 3.51, I think it was 3.5 where we had to boot off of a boot disk and then actually format the, the uh, drive and get it all set up and then run the setup from the CD-ROM. And the reason why I'm using a 98 boot disk as opposed to a 95 boot disk is because this boot disk should support uh, larger uh, hard drive sizes, whereas that Windows 95 boot disk that I have can only create like a maximum partition size of like two gigs, which is not gonna be enough to install uh, what we're trying to install here. So we're here at the A drive. We're going to run F disk and yeah, right here We're going to enable large disk support. So we're going to press enter and Yes, we're going to treat NTFS partitions as large. So let's first display our partition info So we've got that one NTFS partition on the drive We're going to have to delete that by going into option number three here We're going to delete a non DOS partition, which is partition one and yes, we want to delete it, okay. And now we are going to create a DOS partition, primary DOS partition, and this is where we have to wait for it to verify the drive integrity, which is definitely gonna take a little while here because this is a uh, larger hard drive. All right, so the drive integrity has been verified. We're going to press Y on using the maximum available size, and it's gotta verify the drive integrity again, so we'll let it do that. All right, so now we are finished with that. So we're going to, uh, it, tells us that we have to restart the system, so we're going to press escape, 
and then we're going to press uh, control delete here to restart and when this comes up here we are going to yes we're going to have to format the uh, partition because well that's the only way that we can proceed so yeah all the work that we did of kind of starting with those older builds and trying to upgrade through those is essentially lost so we're going to format the c drive it's going to give us the warning message here yes we want to format so it looks like it has created a 10 gigabyte partition on the hard drive which uh, is plenty of space to install these older builds of windows xp so that shouldn't be a problem however since this is not a quick format that it's doing it's going to take a decent amount of time to actually format the partition uh, so hopefully it won't take two hours like it did last time uh, but uh, it, it's definitely going to take much longer than a quick format. So I'll be back with you guys once this is finished. Well, good news, guys. That definitely didn't take as long as the last format we did in this video. So that's awesome. Uh, for the volume label, we're not going to put anything. We're just going to press enter. And now we are going to, so now we've got the C drive formatted. So we've got an MS-DOS primary partition on it. So we're going to go over to the, I believe it's the D drive or no, it's the R drive. Uh, so this here is the uh, setup disk for build 2287. So what we have to do is, I believe, go into the i386 folder and run WinNT. And yep, so we're going to copy files from our i386. And set up the not detect smart drive on your computer. Smart drive will greatly improve the performance of this phase. We're going to continue without smart drive. And so now it's going to copy those files to the hard disk. And uh, so you can also see up at the very top, hopefully you can see it in the camera there, but if you can't, it identifies the uh, OS as Windows Whistler Professional. I just went ahead and kind of moved the screen there, so hopefully you can see it a little bit better. I know that this setup, th this portion of the setup sometimes up at the very top can be a little bit hard to see, so I apologize for that. So basically what this does, I've, I've explained this before, just not in this video, but if you didn't see the other NT upgrade, uh, basically what we're doing here is instead of booting off the disk, which we can do, and running the first portion of the setup from there, this method will copy the setup uh, files to the hard drive, and then we restart and run the setup, the first portion of the setup from the hard drive. Normally, if you were installing a version of Windows NT like this from the CD, you would not boot from the hard drive until it copies files from the first portion of the setup. So we're still gonna have to go through that portion, but this here is kind of just copying the files for the first portion to the hard drive, if that makes any sense. So uh, we're just gonna let it copy here. And yeah, so this build, there were two builds in between. Build, uh, the build that we took a look at, which was 2267 was the one that would blue screen along with 2250. So there were two builds in between 2267 and 2296. I also tried to off camera just move on with installing 2296. And 2296, at least in this case, has this really annoying thing where it just doesn't work like at all. What it does is it's, it will load all of the files for the first portion of the setup and it'll get to the part where it says setup is starting Windows Whistler or setup is starting Windows and it locks up on that. And I had this exact same problem with multiple builds in VMs when I was uh, trying to select builds and capture footage for the Windows XP retrospective video. There were like two or three builds that I tried uh, that just did not get past that phase. This right here, this uh, banana.ani is a driver for, I think it's actually from the boot disk, uh, and this has happened in every single, like every single time that I've tried to do this, so we're just gonna press escape to skip file. Uh, it does not matter, so we're going to press X because we, we don't need it to like use the system, it's just a, a driver file that I believe is on the uh, floppy disk. So yeah, that's, that's what was going on with uh, 2296. So then I thought we could just go to 2419, but that would defeat the whole because that would just be a clean install of 2419 and we wouldn't have actually done a single upgrade. We've not done a single successful upgrade. So yeah, that's why I wanted to avoid doing that. So what I've done is I've selected another build in between this one and 2419, which is 2410. So we're gonna try to upgrade from 2287, if we can get this installed, hopefully, to 2410 and then to 2419. But hopefully, from here on out, hopefully we won't have any problems, but 
you're never really sure. And that's, again, that's just what happens in these videos. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this one so far. I know it's been kind of a long one. All right, so the MS-DOS base portion of setup is completed. So that is a wonderful sign. We're going to do just as it says and remove the floppy disk that is in drive A. And we can actually just disconnect the entire drive at this point since we don't need it anymore. So we're going to press enter to restart the computer. So we've restarted here. We are loading the Windows Whistler setup. I have the floppy disk drive removed from the system because obviously it's an external drive so I can just unplug the whole thing. I did take the disk out though. And I also have removed the CD from the system. So uh, we are booted off the hard drive right now. Setup is starting Windows Whistler so it looks like we're just going to have to wait a moment. And hopefully this build is not going to do the exact same thing as 2296 which is where it will freeze on this uh, on this portion of the setup here. Actually, now that I think about it, this might be... Was this one of the builds that I tried? Because I think I did this in a virtual machine. I wonder if this was... Oh, man. Well, we're just going to... We're just going to wait a moment and just see if uh, if it decides to load here. Hopefully it will, but yeah, I'm just going to leave the computer just like this. All right, welcome back, everybody. So... I've got some bad news. Uh, you can see that we are still on the setup is starting Windows Whistler screen here. And we've been at this for, yep, about two hours. I've had the stopwatch running in the background here. I'm gonna stop it right now. This has been going on for the past two hours. So this is another one of those builds that unfortunately just doesn't boot. Uh, and this is, I mean, again, this is the one that we booted, like we started the whole process by booting off of the floppy disk that I have right here and starting the setup you know, from MS-DOS and copying the files to the hard drive and all of that. And, and you can see that that did not actually work. So we've got two builds left for this video. We've got 2410 and 2419. So we're going to, I'm going to eject the uh, CD right now, which, oh, it's actually already out of the drive, and I'm going to pop in 2410 right here. This is 2410, so we're going to uh, power off the machine. We're going to have to do a force power off, unfortunately, because, well, the system is frozen. But yeah, that right there, that is exactly what I was talking about, because that was happening before in VMs. I think for about two or three of the builds that I tried to take a look at in the XP development history video, I was trying to get a good selection of builds that I thought really kind of represented each phase of the uh, development process pretty well. And some of these builds I wanted to show, but I wasn't able to get them working. Uh, so, and I thought maybe we'd see a different result on real hardware. And you can see that obviously is not the case. So hopefully, we will be able to uh, start at 2410 and upgrade the 2419 and then we'll end this video off and we'll come back uh, in part two and try to upgrade from 2419 to XPRTM or at least get kind of close to that. Uh, so that is going to be, you know, pretty, pretty interesting to see as well. So yeah, if you guys want to see a, a, a part two to this, I know this has not been the most successful project. Um, so far on this channel. I mean, this this probably happens most of the time. I, I made a comment like this in my Windows Vista Red uh, or the product red content pack on, on Windows 10 video, which if you haven't seen that video, check it out up in the cards. Um, that was one of the, and I guess I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but anyways, what I'm trying to say is this, this does happen. I mean, trying to do these kind of tech experiments sometimes will result in uh, things not, not going as planned. And I mean, you guys saw that in the uh, Longhorn, especially Longhorn Upgrade Talk Part 2. We saw that. I think that video was a good representation of, of things just not going to plan. So hopefully we'll be able to get at least one upgrade successfully performed for this video. If we can do that, I'll be happy. Like if we can upgrade from 2410 to 2419, I'll be happy. But uh, the, the problem hasn't been so much upgrading. It's been getting the builds installed, as you guys have seen. I mean, we had issues with, uh, I mean, the only one we tried to upgrade was 2211 to 2250. And we were able to start the upgrade process, but 2250 uh, just was not wanting to install. It was given that blue screen of death. Same thing happened with 2267. 2296 would get stuck on this screen. I hope this one doesn't. Uh, and then the last build we just took a look at got stuck on this screen. I really hope this one doesn't. I'm kind of wondering about this now. It seems like this is such a common problem with these Whistler builds. All right, everyone. So we are finally back. I just want to update you briefly on some things I've been doing uh, behind the scenes. So uh, unfortunately, 
I don't think we're going to be able to get an, a single upgrade accomplished in this video, and I'll kind of explain why. So, as I was kind of speculating in the last clip, we had the exact same thing happen with build 2410. And that is where it gets to this point in the setup and it freezes on setup is starting Windows Whistler. So then I moved on to 2416, which is a, another build. It's actually the only build that we have available to us in between 2410 and 2419. And that's what we're running right now and it's doing the exact same thing. So I was doing some research, I came across a thread on uh, Beta Archive of some people talking about this issue. And there was one uh, poster who mentioned that he has this problem happen between 2276 and 2416. Now 2276 was the other build that I could have chosen aside from 2287, which I tried to install. Uh, and that's when we actually loaded off of the floppy drive and all of that earlier in this video. So that build through this one that we're running right now uh, has this exact same issue. So that leaves us essentially with only one other option and that is to just install 2419 which I've got right here and I know will work because well I've installed it on real hardware before it just wasn't this exact computer it was uh, the 98 PC but I don't see any reason why this won't install on the uh, Dell Latitude D610 here. So I'm going to have to force power off the system. And yeah, so what we're essentially going to do is I'm going to take you guys through the uh, installation process of 2419. We'll get it installed and unfortunately that will have to be the end of this video because this is the stopping point where I wanted to stop. And at this point I think I have about like two to three hours worth of footage. There is a decent amount of footage uh, that, I've <laughs> that I've got. And uh, so I'm going to have to edit through that. And uh, so, again, the reason why that I'm, I'm splitting this up is I think the transition from watercolor to Luna is a good stopping point. Uh, and it was exactly, this is exactly how I structured it in my original set of development history videos where I did the pre-Luna episode and then the post-Luna episode, which were the builds after the Luna theme was introduced. Uh, so that's kind of what we're going to do here. And we have been through, I mean, the original set of builds was going to be, I mean, there were five builds that I mentioned earlier in this video, and that was 2211, 2250, 2267, 2296, and 2419. But we've tried uh, more than just those five. <laughs> Uh, we've tried again 2287, we've tried 2410, all of them have kind of resulted in various problems. And yeah, so you can see here, we're booted into 2419 setup and we were able to finally get past that setup is starting Windows Whistler. So we can actually go through this and yes, we're going to have to format the hard drive once again. So let me just agree to the license terms. Install, format using the NTFS file system quickly. Uh, we, well, we could also convert it to NTFS, we're just going to format it again. Uh, so we'll just press F because this, I mean, we were never able to convert this partition to NTFS because we created a uh, primary DOS partition for uh, 20, which one was that, 24 or 2287. Yeah, I've, I've got so many, I've got like, like notes here written down of all these builds uh, and all of them have had different problems of why we can't get them installed. So... Yeah, unfortunately guys, I mean, we definitely weren't able to accomplish what we wanted to accomplish in this video, but like I mentioned, this happens from time to time, uh, but hopefully you guys have still enjoyed this content for what it is. So yeah, basically what we're going to do for the rest of the video is install 2419, and uh, that's going to wrap it up. So, But I'm still going to actually record the installation process just so we can kind of get the machine set up and you know ready for part two of this video. Well, I spoke too soon, because as you guys can see, Whistler2419 is giving us a blue screen, but it's a different error this time. Uh, so, I actually got this, and I tried some troubleshooting off-camera. I thought this might have to do with the date. I have the date set to the proper date in 2001, when this build was compiled, and, uh, well, that didn't do anything. Uh, this is a, a completely different error though. This is not the same error we got with 2250 and 2267. So unfortunately guys, that is going to wrap it up for today's video. I know this one was not a not as successful as probably all of us wanted it to be, but hopefully part two uh, of this, which is basically going to be starting from scratch, uh, just with later builds, hopefully we'll see some more results with that. If you guys want to see that, uh, be sure to let me know. Hopefully we'll get better results than what we got here. But uh, 
yeah, as for right now, guys, that's going to wrap it up for today's video. So I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and uh, turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do every single week, multiple times per week on this channel. Hopefully, well, usually they're a bit more successful than this, though. Um, but we, we definitely do have these kind of problems from time to time. But like I said, I hope you all enjoyed this one. And uh, I want to thank you all so much for watching. And I will see you all in the next video.